You're listening to the Teak Nation Podcast, where we strive to educate, inspire, and entertain you with tips and lessons from frauders and friends of TKE. Hello, Teak Nation Podcast. Welcome in. My name is Alex Swinson, and you are listening to the number one Tall Cap Epsilon related podcast on the face of the planet. So congratulations for that. It is Wednesday, March 9th, and we are very, very, very excited to have a special interview today with Stephen Farrig. Stephen uh, is not a member of Talk Ab Epsilon, so we uh, we get to that in the interview and, and don't hold it against him all that much, but we do a little bit. Um, but Campus Inc., uh, is is a great partner to Tall Kappa Epsilon. If you are sporting any Teak swag that you have purchased on the Teak store, www.teakstore.com, it's come from his his offices. It's come from from his products at, at Campus Inc. And they are doing some really big and exciting things. And it was great to have an opportunity to talk to somebody who has built something like that. I know a lot of you out there are interested in becoming entrepreneurs. You're interested in starting your own businesses, whether it's as a full-time gig right out of college or as a side hustle that could potentially turn into something more serious as time moves on. And we really dig into that with Steven and, and ask him how he built what he built today. And then a, a pretty cool announcement as well, something um, that actually just came into the public sphere yesterday that he talks about, but I won't ruin that for you. So without further ado, let's bring in Stephen Farrig. Welcome in guest for this week's Teak Nation podcast, co-founder of Campus Inc., Stephen Farrig. Stephen, how we doing? How's, uh, how's, how's life in Illinois? It's good. It was like 45 yesterday. It's like snowing now. So just another typical day in central Illinois. That's, uh, that's the Midwestern weather that we, we know and love. Donnie actually uh, loves talking about the snow on the Teak Nation podcast. So you're, you're speaking our language. It's well known that I hate snow by this point. So it's nice. It's cute when you interact with people on the West coast, right. Or in, in uh, the South and they're like, it'd be so cool to see snow. And you're like, well, yeah, be, it's kind of like ice cream. It's great once, you know, in a while, but if you ate it for every meal, it would just get, it would get tiring very quickly. And our listeners also know that I love ice cream. So I very much. <laughs> it's a dual play there. Steve. Are you guys, um, both, are you guys both in Indiana? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's not much better there. <laughs> not pleasant. Not pleasant. Um, I want to, I want to cut, we have a lot of grounds cover and, and I appreciate you doing this and, and hopping in here. And um, I think some of our listeners know, but not all of them know that we partner with Campus Inc. for our Teak Store and that anything that you've purchased from the Teak Store in the last year plus has, has come from Campus Inc. And um, Campus Inc. is a well-known brand, right? It's something that you all have worked to build and put out there and um, make make known to, to the masses. And so I want to I want to just talk first about your origin story at Campus Inc. And, and my understanding is you started as kind of a, a do everything employee there that slowly transformed and morphed into your position now. And just, you know, how that progressed for you, what it was that compelled you to, to go down this path of becoming a co-founder of the company and, um, and, and moved you into the position you are today. Yeah. So I actually started in my frat house. That is where I started. So I was a Delta Chi at University of Illinois. Well, well, well I didn't realize we'll uh, end the interview then. Sorry. Thanks. Oh, Thanks okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Teeks came back. Teeks are back on at, yeah. at, in Champaign. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, we were, uh, I was Delta Chi. I'm sorry. Um, but I started selling apparel out of my frat house um, for, you know, perhaps some social events, if you will. Um, and I had a really cool design. I don't know if anyone knows who Brian Scalabrini is. Oh yeah. Cool. Well, I don't know if so our listeners had... know who Brian Scalabrini is. Um, he, had a, you know, he had a good run there with the Celtics. He had yeah. a good run. He had a good run. Uh, so I made a, a St. Patrick's day themed Jersey, uh, that was Brian Scalabrini inspired. And if listeners want to Google Brian Scalabrini, they'd understand why, um, he <laughs> aligns with St. Patrick's day. Um, but, uh, one thing led to another and my design went viral before TikTok and Snapchat existed. And I sold literally enough jerseys to like pay for a year of school at U of I. Um, and so I just became the t-shirt kid on campus. Literally, like I would go to the shop on green street and sixth street and buy shirts and sell them and take orders. And 
Um, one thing led to another. And the two guys that were printing for me um, were twice my age. And I said, can I buy into your business? And they said, sure, we want to retire. So I graduated college. And the next day I started my career in the t-shirt business. So yeah. Um, it, it just yeah. evolved from there. So, I mean, uh, obviously building that up was its its own process, but um, how, you know, how'd you, uh, I guess, next question is how, how did you go from making t-shirts for, um, for fraternities and sororities in, in champagne to now having a, a national brand? Yeah. So, um, so I was a fifth year on campus, still graduating, um, while I was working at the shop, learning the ropes, um, finishing my last couple of classes. So, uh, naturally I had underclassmen that were helping me sling apparel. So I had a couple of guys um, that were in some different houses and uh, Venmo didn't exist yet. So they would bring me money for their orders. I would tip them out and I taught them kind of like the ropes of, of selling apparel. We would sit together and learn Photoshop and Illustrator. And that slowly like started to snowball into something. Um, we started hanging out together. And next thing you know, we hired someone at ISU and then, you know, uh, down in, at SIU. And now we're on, I want to say, about 40 campuses. We've got about 150 students that all work for us in the same role that I did. I, I designed and sold apparel. So it's been pretty organic, pretty grassroots. Um, it's been just the great network and relationships that we build, um, mostly in the Greek community. But a lot of our success has come from, you know, um, reaching out to people we printed for Barstool back in the day. Um, you know, I just, D, we, we just DM them and, and they responded to us. So a lot of our success has been from asking and trying and messing up and just doing it over and over and over again. So, and I'm not that old, I'm only 30. So. Steven, can you talk about the design process? Cause I think for, for our students who are listening and even our alumni who are listening, they're really interested in that piece and how much time and energy and effort goes into different designs and how many essentially get left in the trash, right? Where it seemed like a good idea and maybe it, it actually morphs into something better and then that gets left. But just curious on that piece, how many ideas go into a shirt design before you actually solidify on one and say, this is something we're going to print in mass? Yeah. I mean, all of us in the company that sell are also designers, right? So we're always talking to our customers and getting ideas. So for instance, we did uh, Founders Day shirts and it was like the boys are back in town for teaks, right? Um, that started probably as a concept and just got iterated, iterated, iterated. Oh, you might toss out a dozen pieces of art until you find it. And you're like, wait, we like that. Now, at the same time, you can walk into a fraternity house and probably find a master's t-shirt that every frat has. And those go a little bit quicker. Uh, but some of our cool designs like that, that Founders Day shirt was, was pretty awesome. So, um, you know, sometimes they're quick and easy. But other times we're really pouring a lot into it and uh, we're working on Illustrator, Photoshop, Procreate, you name it, um, you know, really trying to perfect it. So, yeah, art is definitely a process. What uh, what design are you most proud of? What What's something that stands out? May, and if it's the Scalabrini shirt, then maybe what design are you second most proud of? But what what stands out to you as like, yeah, I, I crushed that. that uh, that's going to live on in my mind for a long time. Hmm. You know, there's a cool feeling um, when you see your shirt out there in the world, like you see other people yeah. wearing it. And, um, you know, I've designed I've designed things for like some bigger name DJs um, that when you actually see it on their Instagram and you're just like, whoa, like we made that. Um, we designed something for Sophie Tucker and it was for uh, the FIFA release in New York. Um, and it was literally printed on the video game, you know. Um, but we also design for a lot of really big athletes. So, uh, we're working with guys at the Mavs. We've got guys on UConn guys at the university of Illinois, and we actually get to take, you know, their designs and their ideas and turn them into like real, real apparel and real merch lines. So, um, I've done it so many times it might be hard to pick my favorite. Um, but I think most recently I did a pretty cool one for Kofi Coburn at the university of Illinois. Um, and he's, uh, he's tearing it up in the big 10 right now. So, yeah, absolutely. I know just looking at, at some of the, the campusing social media pieces, well, you guys have started and, and kind of dipped your toe in the NIL game with, with college athletes, as you were just talking about, what was that process? Like, was that a, was that a light bulb moment of like, 
holy cow, we should do this. Did someone come to you and, and propose that? And then it took off from there. I just, that's, that's new to the game in the last couple of years. And I'm curious how you all got involved in, in that side of things. Yeah. So again, started with a student just sending me a message. Um, we, we train our students to sell apparel to fraternities and sororities, um, not really athletes. Cause like, you know, they're not really able to do that. Well, this new bill passed where the athletes can make money now. So July 3rd, I get a text message from a, a sophomore at U of I saying, Hey, I messaged the whole basketball team. They want us to do their, to do your, to do their merch. I'm just like, okay, here we go. And that's literally how it started. Um, Joey Hart's a sophomore in college. And um, that started the domino effect. Um, and it's been cool because we can take a guy who, you know, has been playing basketball his whole life and turn them into a brand um, and actually let them, you know, wear it and, and do shoots with it and stuff like that. So it's been pretty cool and it's brand new. Curious, Steven, for the vast amount of product that, that you all create and move, what, what's hot right now, what's fashionable right now that you're seeing. And also the, if you can speak to the challenge of trying to stay ahead of the curve, right. And try to look around corners of what is going to be the next thing and, and trying to be on the forefront of that, that process and the work that you and your team do. Yeah. I mean, comfort colors, everyone wants comfort colors, right? Um, when the pandemic hit, comfort colors were really hard to get. Uh, and so people had to start getting creative and finding new things. So, you know, then they went back in time and went to tie dye. Right. <laughs> um, but really what's, what's been big recently has been like Carhartt. Carhartt has been crushing it and, uh, you can get Carhartt in short sleeves and, and crews and hoods. Um, but Carhartt has been killer. And, you know, I think we did something for teak outdoors. I want to say, uh, where, you know, it's like a, a cool kind of Patagonia looking patch, um, on a, on a, on, on the left chest. So Carhartt's been awesome. You know, some of the old brands like champ champion is back. Champion is one of the biggest brands now. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of people move away from, you know, the traditional frat prints. We always joke, like, you know, in a frat house, you'll always find a guy with a shirt with a sailboat on it or a guy with a dog on a cooler and a flag. That's really common. Um, but now we're actually starting to see like, you know, some of the guys working more in like album artwork or trying to make some more like streetwear and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of obscure prints. A lot of guys are printing on hoods now. Um, so we're having fun with it. It's challenging nonetheless. But, uh, but yeah, the nineties are back. Definitely. I was, I was going to ask, I'm, I'm 31. Donnie's uh, a little older and we won't reveal it on this podcast. Uh, but uh, you know, same, same general generation millennial and, and what, what, what goes through your mind when a 19 year old comes to you and says, Hey, we want to print on Carhartt or we want a champion hoodie or whatever that is. And you're like, I used to get made fun of for wearing these things, or I haven't seen that in 20 years. Like what, what's going through your mind when you're just like, how, how has this come back into the, the public landscape? You know, like I, I think I'm in front of it. And then the students bring me something and I'm like, what the <laughs> heck? And they're like, no, no, no. Everyone loves it. And you know um, I mean, you know, the fashion trends start in the college campuses. Yeah. So like you, you gotta, you gotta stay on it and, and, you know, not be surprised by anything and everything, right? Like when pandemic hit, it was all about like gray workout suits. You know, we couldn't buy sweatpants to save our lives. Um, but everyone, you know, joggers really came back. So I've seen it all. Uh, you've seen, you know, people like their clothes tight and, you know, now loose fitting and baggy and, um, it really, you know, it, nothing surprises me anymore. Right. I, I, I would imagine. Um, I want to get in a little more to just the, some of the, the lessons and the, the personal journey that you've been on. What have you learned about yourself as a, as a leader? I'm sure going to University of Illinois, you did not expect to be in this position as a, as a 30 year old, but what lessons have you learned? What's come out of you in the last 10 years, the last five years that maybe you didn't know you had within yourself as you continued to, to build this company? Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, you know, when you're in college, you don't really know what you're learning. Um, and then when you leave college, you're like, I learned a lot in college. And I, I don't mean that by the books. Like, I was a very active member of my fraternity. I was president of my fraternity. Um, you, dealt, you deal with it all when you're on exec board. You know, you name it, you deal with it. 
And uh, being 22 years old and jumping into a business I knew nothing about, I I took for granted how much I actually like learned in college along the way, whether it was managing finances or collecting money or billing or, you know, um, you name it. Now, along the way, I think the, the biggest thing I've learned is that you can't stop. Like if you ever think you figured it out, you know, like you're done for, you know? And so something I challenge myself to do is like continually be a sponge and continually learn. Um, and I do that by taking classes and rolling in different things. Um, because like, you know, your twenties are where you're really going to figure out things. And like the decisions you make in your twenties will affect your thirties and your forties. Right. So, um, you know, the other thing I think I learned is I was probably a little too hard on myself in college. Like, oh my God, how am I going to find a job? What am I going to do? Does my GPA matter that much? You know, my resume. And, and really it came down to like the stories, you know, the, the relationships, um, never went to a career fair or did any of that stuff. Uh, it's all about, you know, your network and, and, and meeting people and leveraging them and really, really leveraging your network. I feel like undergrad are scared to do it. And then when they realize they have a network, it's just this, like they can open, open a can of opportunities. So there you go. Gave you a couple. Well, those are, those are really good. And you know, that last piece that you touched on expanding your network and the folks that you engage with new opportunity that you all have. And, and at, at the airing of this podcast, something new that has been publicly announced, you want to showcase that for our. Sure, partners? sure, sure, sure. So um, everyone watches the show shark tank um, and there's an investor on there by the name of Mark Cuban um, who recently made an investment into campus Inc. Um, and, uh, he did it because I emailed him and I asked, I sent him a cold email and I put my business in a, in a couple lines. And I said, I would love to work with you, you know, uh, if you're interested and he responded. Um, and so, you know, the lesson I learned was, you know, if you don't ask, no one will ever be, ever be able to say yes to you. Um, but Mark Cuban is going to be investing in Campus Inc. to work with college students, college athletes, and continue building college brands. So um, we're going to double down on the frats, double down on the athletes, and then really take like the TKE store to the next level, um, bringing in you know cooler brands, um, you know that are more trendy and, and all that stuff. So uh, it's a pretty cool opportunity. It's all brand new to us, um, you know. And uh, we don't know what's in store, but uh, I do get to talk to Mark once a week. Uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool to, to work with a billionaire. Yeah, so that's, uh, there's a million questions where we can go from here. And I'm sure Al and I will try to see how many we can get, get through. But I am curious, how many conversations from that email towards getting a deal? Because I think that folks can have some disillusionment on that. And also, uh, maybe it's just enlightenment of, uh, it, it was simple, but I'm curious how many conversations from that email until you got to that point where you actually were in business together and he felt comfortable putting his reputation and his dollars behind Campus Inc. Yeah. So we went back and forth in an email thread. I sent him an email on a Friday night. I noticed that he read it because I can see from our emails if he's read it. And then I saw he read it again and again and again. Um, and then he responded to me, except I foolishly in my email forgot to ask him for anything. And so he responded are you, you know, what are you looking for? Are you just bragging? <laughs> so I responded back uh, and I actually threw some shade on the, the Hoosiers because we're Illini. Um, and, uh, you know, we went back and forth in a thread of an email throughout Saturday. And by the end of the day, he had an offer. Um, and then, you know, once he puts his offer in, it's not like he just, you know, you start working, his team came in and really started working with us. And that happened around Christmas, um, the holidays and, uh, you know, we're closing here in, in, in almost, uh, almost March. So, um, three months, three, four months, um, that's, what's called like due diligence in business, um, where they really dig into everything, make sure it's all true. It's not BS. Um, a lot of people that go on Shark Tank, actually, um, some of those deals fail because of the due diligence, you know, um, and no, we are not going on Shark Tank. <laughs> I'm, so uh, you talked about cold emails, and I think that's, uh, you talked about networking and, and the cold emails, and they're, they're very much aligned in my mind, because it's all about asking people for things. I mean, you, you have to have something to offer, obviously, but 
that the answer to every question you, you don't ask is no. And so was that a one off like I'm going to target Mark Cuban specifically because I want him investing in the company Were there are 100 investors that you targeted Were there five like what what did that process look like to come to the point where you're like, I'm going to fire this email off because this is a guy that I want to work with and, and I would really, really value an opportunity to partner together. Um, the short answer is I went one for one. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I mean, that uh, it's, it's very lucky. So I was, um, I was exploring raising capital. Um, like you hear people like, you know, series A, series B fun, you know, that stuff. So I was, I was contemplating and I was starting to meet with like mentors and coaches and advisors and, you know, people in business. And they said, Steven, like you have a business, you don't have an idea. You already are a business. You really just need a strategic partner, you know, like, like a Mark Cuban or something. And, um, my brother actually works in sports and he's a sports agent. And I said, you know, Hey, I would really love a strategic partner like Mark Cuban. And he kind of laughed and said, yeah, everyone would. Um, and I kind of just, I don't know why I was on a blog and I saw that people have emailed him. And, uh, so I said, you know what, let me just shoot him an email and there you go. So, um, you know, if you don't ask, uh, they can't say yes. So, yeah. So in your uh, three to four month relationship, I guess closer to three month relationship that you've now formed with Mark Cuban. What are, what are some of the things that you've picked up from him in just a short, short period of time? Um, you know, a lot of interaction is by email. So he answers a lot of his emails and he'll just fire back. I, it's almost like you feel, I feel like I'm working with like my dad is the best way to put it. He's going to give me some good advice. He's going to tell me what to watch out for and send me on my way. You know, he's invested in hundreds of companies and he's doing this on much bigger scale with other businesses and other ventures. But he does, you know, you could tell like he's passionate about helping entrepreneurs um, as, as he himself was. So, um, you know, a lot of his team is also helping. So he's got, he's got, uh, guys on his, on his, on his staff that are able to like help me with little things or, you know, make some strategic hires and stuff like that. But he does like an update once a week. Um, and you know, sometimes he won't answer sometimes, you know, he'll fire back some things. So, um, it's no different than, than you and me. So, yeah. We were talking earlier about, um, the, the clothing brands, the styles that are in right now, uh, entrepreneurship is very in right now. A lot of people want that side hustle. They want to start companies, whether it's college students or 50 year olds with professional careers. I'm sure, or I'm guessing you get a lot of questions about that because you have started in and built a successful business, either from the college students that you work with or, or people off the street or people that are buying from you. What advice do you give them? What do you tell someone that says, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a company, whether it's an apparel company or a tech company or whatever that is. Uh, you know, what, what advice do you have for me? What path do you, do you start them down to try and maximize their success? Yeah. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, you know, I, I was, my, my dad told me this, like in business when, I, when we were talking about, and, and I went to school for engineering. Um, and so it was, are you going to go be an engineer? Or are you going to run a t-shirt company? And, you know, his answer was like, if not now, then when, if you don't take this opportunity now, are you going to, when are you going to do it? And so I think a lot of people are learning, like there's different ways to make money. There's crazy ecosystems of, of, of ways to make money now. And, you know, the hardest part about doing it is just jumping in. But a lot of people are starting businesses on the side until it turns into something and materializes, right? And so, um, you know, if, if you're thinking about starting a business, start, but don't quit your day job, you know, um, but try it out. And, you know, when you fail, fail fast. Um, and that's totally okay, you know, uh, because that means you'll, you know, try something else and do it better the next time. And, and I think people are so scared of failing in business, but that's actually probably one of the best lessons you can learn. Um, and so, you know, I think that that would be my advice. What, I mean, what, what have been your failures? Where have been your missteps? What are the, the lessons that you've had to learn the hard way along this journey? Sure. Sure. So like being a very young person in a pretty huge, like a big company that we've grown, um, you know, it's very, it's humbling because this has been my only job after graduation, Right. And I've made every mistake from firing and hiring the wrong people to saying the wrong things to, you know, shipping the shirt to the wrong state with the wrong fraternity letters on it. You name it, we've done it. Um, and I've personally done it. Um, and, you know, uh, 
it's we we joke and say they're just t-shirts <laughs> that's our that's our excuse um but they're just little memories you can talk about for the rest of your life you know they're just little anecdotes that you put in your little wallet and say oh you know that happened and because of this i'm smarter you know and so um you know we're we're in the business of making mistakes that's totally okay no one's perfect so yeah what are your aspirations for for Campus Inc? Obviously, it's a big step in this new venture that you have with Mark Cuban. But what is what's your what's your vision? Right, it's many times whenever Alex and I talk in front of our collegiate leaders and even some of our young alumni leaders, that's what we talk about is vision. What's the vision that you're sharing with those in your company, your organization, your team? What what's your vision for what Campus Inc can become? Yeah, so um, we want to you know Campus Inc is rooted in education and teaching. You know, we, we teach design, we teach brand, we develop one another. Um, we do that really well with college students. And so we never want to lose that in our business, whether they're college students in a fraternity or college athletes, we are rooted in education and we're students, you know, we're students of one another. Um, what I would like to build is that platform where athletes can make money, where college students can, you know, make money. Um, and it feels like an immersive, immersive spot. There's a lot of like college jobs out there that sometimes feel spammy and scammy. And, you know, our college athletes make legit money and, and so do our college students. And so, um, you know, it, it would be a dream of mine to have something in such a way that, um, you know, we could have thousands of students on it and thousands of athletes. I'm a huge sports nut. And so um, what fun would it be to print for, you know, for, for every college athlete in the country? Um, so, you know, the next couple of years are going to be pretty intense. We're going to be investing several million dollars into technology and infrastructure and, you know, road mapping and all that kind of stuff. Um, but hopefully we're laying down the foundation for, for, you know, for a future. Um, and I think what's cool is like, I fell into t-shirts and, and now it's turned into something bigger than myself. And so like, you know, what I learned in all of this is, is it's okay to like follow the weird thing or the weird, weird, you know, experience or whatever, because those are usually the special ones. Um, and, and, and I, I sincerely think that. So, yeah. Well, Stephen, I, uh, I can't, can't thank you enough for your time. Um, and for the insight, the, the last piece I have is just something that we, we ask typically ask our, our guests is it's a little different since you're not a, a member of Tall Cap Epsilon directly, but you're a fraternity man and you, work a lot with college students and you see a lot of the the landscape and things that are going on out there any any messages to share with our listeners any final thoughts that you think could be helpful to our our members or our alumni or anything as they continue to progress throughout their college careers and their lives yeah i think uh your college careers are is your sandbox for the rest of your life you know you can make some mistakes um but don't waste it you know the fraternity is the one of the best ecosystems to learn life to make your best friends, um, to also manage a group of individuals, to be part of something, to be philanthropic, um, to be social and, you know, use that sandbox because when it's gone, uh, you're going to miss the living daylights out of it. And, uh, you know, like, like really, really, really embrace that, that sandbox. And if your grades aren't that good, you know, that's okay. Um, get them there. Uh, but, you know, get invested in something in college um, and, and, and lean into something um, because it'll definitely impact your future. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you um, again. This is, this has been great. Really appreciate you making some time for us. Um, any, uh, any bold basketball predictions for the rest of the Illini season or the big 10 in general that you'd like to share with our, uh, our audience here? Um, well, this is, this is, uh, it'll be interesting when this airs. That's a good um, point. You could you could look really smart or you could look really not. Smart, I'm but, I'm uh, I I don't want to say or not say. Obviously, uh, if Illinois does make a run, we get to do all of the printing, mm. um, which is cool. We lost to Loyola last year very early on, so we had 50, 40,000 orange shirts to return. Um, so we really want Illinois to make a run, and uh, I don't feel bad for Michigan whatsoever. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, the big 10, we beat each other up and then, you know, hopefully something's left for the tournament, but hopefully Illinois makes a decent run. Purdue looks really good. Um, but, uh, but who knows it's anyone's ball game. So I yeah. think, I think I had Illinois in my final four last year. So that's, uh, that's tough. Loyola is just up the road though. You guys couldn't just pivot and 
uh yeah we almost printed maroon shirts they had maroon they were the truckloads of maroon that were going to come down and i was like this is um, i was not happy about it so <laughs> yeah cool well, that's uh again we'll uh we'll find out when this airs but uh this is it is uh it is february 23rd as we record this so anything that happened we're coming right off the juan howard incident which is why i don't feel bad for michigan just to give our listeners some context and you know maybe maybe three four five weeks from now uh things will things will be looking differently maybe you'll be celebrating a natty there in uh in champagne yeah absolutely all right steven we'll let you get back to it uh appreciate you Uh, and, and just really have enjoyed the opportunity to talk. Thanks guys. And we just want to thank Steven one more time. What a, what a fantastic opportunity. And again, check out his products. If you need things on your campus um, for your chapter, for other organizations you're in, I'm sure he'd be willing to help as well as checking out www.teakstore.com. A lot more really cool products uh, going to be on the horizon there as you uh, as you heard from him. That is all for us here today. Thank you for listening. Be sure you subscribe, you smash the like button, you, uh, you, 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 set up a Google notification whenever uh, Teague Nation podcast drops, whatever you have to do. Uh, just make sure that you're the very first person to find out when a new episode comes available. My name is Alex Swinson. That is all. We'll talk to you soon.